Have you ever wanted to cut out an image with a solid color background, like say pink or blue or green, and wondered what the best tool was to use in Photoshop? That would be the color range tool. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of how to make a selection with color range. Also some tips on how to cut out hair, all with the purpose of putting it on its separate background. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Charles Cabrera. If you're just starting out with Photoshop, Lightroom, or photography, you've come to the right place. If you like short and easy tutorials, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. By the way, if you want to know more about making selections in Photoshop, I'll put a link to the playlist in the card above and a link in the description. Let's get started. So we're going to use the color range tool to cut out this subject from this greenish background. Now we already have a subject layer and then I have a texture layer below it. And then I have a color fill layer that I'm going to use for testing the cutout at a different point just to see if there's any areas that are still showing any kind of color fringing from this original color. The color range tool is at the top under select color range. We're going to be using the sampled colors. So make sure that is selected. There's all these other options, but this option is going to allow us to use this eyedropper tool right here. We want the fuzziness all the way to the left. We want this selection to be clicked because we want to see the actual pixels or the colors that we're selecting in the preview. And we want selection preview to none right now and uncheck invert. So now with the eyedropper selected, click once on the image, then click on the plus eyedropper and you can click and drag or click anywhere. Selecting the color, don't click on the hair. And just by clicking around, you can see in the preview that we've got a pretty good selection. But what we want to do is we want to see a preview of how it looks. And we can try any of these other preview selection modes and see which one looks best so that we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to go with the white mat. I'm also going to click this invert button because right now we can see from the preview that the white areas, which are the areas that are selected, is the background and we want the subject selected. So if we click on invert, we can see in real time where we have our selection. So now we can use the fuzziness to control how wide a range of colors is in the selection. So to increase that range that's actually the, that color we're after, if I bring up the fuzziness a little bit, you can see that the selection is more refined and the only areas that we see are right around the hair, there's some fringing. But the rest of our selection looks really good. And we're going to take care of that fringing. I don't want to see that the ends of the hair get distorted because of the fuzziness is too high. So clicking OK, there's my selection. And if I click on the Add New Layer Mask, there is our subject cut out of the background with color range, but now we need to go further and refine the edges of the hair. And we have a couple of techniques that we're going to use to do that. So I'm going to create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to take care of the fringing. So I named that color fringe and anything I do on that layer, I want it to just affect the layer below. 
So I'm going to clip that new layer to the layers below with Option Command G. And since we're only concerned with color, I'm going to change the blend mode of that layer to color. And we're going to use the brush tool to paint in the hair or the the color of the hair by sampling close to the hair and painting just around the area where we see the green green fringe coming in from the previous background. But first, let's check the eyedropper tool. I just want to see what my sample size is, and it should be about five by five. And sample curtain below. Make sure you have that. And back to the brush tool. B for the brush tool. And we're going to go through this image. I'm going to sample Option Alt and paint in right on the edges where you see color coming through. So we're getting rid of that fringe. Now because we have the color range layer clip to the layers below, every time we paint, it's not going to paint outside. It is clipped to the layer below, which is our mask. So I'm trying to sample some color right below where the fringe is the color fringe from the previous background and paint that in. I'm going through this rather quickly. So here's our texture that we are going to put behind our subject. There's also something that you should probably try and do. I mean, if you were going to leave it on this particular texture background, you can see that it looks pretty good, but it's when you do a cutout and you try and test it with the darker colors. So even that isn't, isn't bad. It looks pretty good. But as you can see, this is, uh, looks a lot better with the, the lighter colors and that's pretty normal for some of these cutouts like this, but there is something else you can do to help get rid of any additional color fringing that is still left over. You can refine this mask. Just click on the mask, double click and bring up the select and mask tool here at the bottom. There's something called decontaminate colors. Now clicking that you already saw that it made a slight change and you can vary what that actually does. I'm going to leave it on oh, 90% right now, 80%. And it will output to new layer with layer mask. Click OK. And we have a new layer that has been refined. And there is our finished image. So the color range tool has many uses. I just wanted to give you an example of a case where it's probably the most common use. That brings us to the question of the day. Have you ever used the color range tool? And if so, what did you use it for? Let me know in the comments below. If you want more tutorials on making selections in Photoshop, see the ones above. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And remember, it's never too late to learn. See you in the next video.